So um, we have really special two speakers tonight. Uh, the first speaker will be Professor Dr. Oyalsun Chok from Bashkent University, Turkey, who is a vice chair uh, of Adra Part One, a colleague of mine and my one of my really good mentors. And um, our second uh, speaker is uh, Peter Mashovi, who is a uh, vice chair of Adra Part Two. And to remind you, uh, I have a couple of things to remind you before we start. Uh, throughout this webinar, uh, you, you should use the QA button and we will uh, answering uh, the questions at the end in the discussion session. And um, we will be asking you also two questions. Uh, one question in the beginning uh, right now about uh, your position in your anesthesiology career and, and another surprise question in the end. So um, uh, as a spoiler, I was privileged to listen to this uh, really um, specific session in our national congress. So as a spoiler, it will be really good and a really useful uh, session for um, mostly for trainees and for all regional anesthesia uh, enthusiasts. So um, please, Professor Dr. Oyalchin Chok, the microphone is yours. Uh, so I will break down the EDRA part one, the written exam part for you. And uh, I hope this will help you um, answer the questions in your mind. Uh, the, before starting actually talking about part one, I just want to say that I have a big conflict of interest because I have been in this group of people in this family uh, since 2012, and I enjoyed to be there very much other than being a diplomat and um, having insight in this uh, diploma system, I'm very happy to help you in your journey for this diploma. So uh, why this diploma is created? We have to talk about, about a little bit of regional anesthesia in whole anesthesiology practice because it has long been restricted to neuroaxial, uh, neuroaxial techniques or to a few very basic peripheral nerve blocks. And it, the regional anesthesia topic treated as uh, something that only the interested anesthesiologists had further training. But now with the use of ultrasound and with some other techniques coming up every day, it has a significant place and rising popularity in current clinical practice. But it comes to training at the end. If you don't have any training, you cannot do it properly. And you cannot um, think that you are competent or uh, proficient. But the region and see the training is actually very similar in the most of the uh, countries. And it starts during residency. However, it is dependent on the institutional education programs. After residency, what we do during the work life is mostly an individual learning period without a mentor. These independent learning activities, um, such as patient follow-up, peer training, like you see a colleague and you learn from him or her, or you just uh, review the literature and you try to nourish your own regional anesthesia training afterwards. And there are some fellowship programs uh, we can see in some countries such as the, uh, the US or the UK, uh, these programs are mostly uh, aiming to, uh, to have trained people who can train others in regional anesthesia or uh, start up a regional anesthesia service or acute pain medicine service. But the problem is that the assessment and documentation of competence in this field, we have got resident reports or records which tell us about the minimum number of practice that everyone has got in the residency period. However, these records and reports lack about all details such as success rate, efficiency, complications, or the complication management of these complications, which is very, very important. And there are some institutional reports on the other side uh, coming from the institutions who give these trainings, but actually there's no data on the assessment of the outcomes 
in the residence or the um, people uh, pointed in this training. So the other assessment or documentation of competence system is having exams. And here, EDRA, the European Diploma in Region Anesthesia and Acute Pain Management, is the only diploma that shows your competence or proficiency in the world now. So coming to EDRA, actually it is created in 2005 by European Society of Regional Anesthesia. And the goal of EDRA was to establish high standards for regional anesthesia in Europe, but it became very popular and influencing other parts of the uh, other parts of the world. And we have got uh, now new EDRA diplomats coming from uh, other countries out of the Europe. And um, actually, EDRA uh, encouraged the de development and assessment of proficiency in regional anesthesia. And it widened the activity spectrum of anesthesiologists who are already in regional anesthesia practice. And what is new with EDRA? We have got new uh, systems to make everything easier for the candidates, such as remote exam systems like written exams or part two oral exams. You can have them on online systems. We lowered the uh, standards for prerequisites a little bit because COVID pandemic days, um, limited ADRA approved workshop attendance and um, Peter will be telling you more about this later on. And ADRA started an um, application for European accreditation and it will become a European CESMA accredited um, diploma very soon. So now I'm starting the first part, the EDRA part one exam, breaking down what I will talk is prerequisites and the application process, exam content, syllabus, and exam structure with some sample questions. For prerequisites, actually, it is not easy to start a written exam application because you have to be a medically qualified physician for it first. It means that the other anesthesia practitioners, um, other than being a medical phys physicians, cannot apply for this exam. And you have to have an official anesthesiology training program for a minimum of two years before applying for the examination. And you have to be an ESRA member. For application process, there is no limit of attempts for candidates applicate, uh, apl applying for EDRA Part 1 exam. And there is no need for workshop attendance. The only thing that you should go to ESRA website and click on this web uh, address and you will be able to see upcoming or next EDRA Part 1 written examination sites and dates. After you choose a date or site which is uh, suitable for you as these samples, then you will click the application site and this click will take you to official application um, program of ETRA. It is on Orzone platform and you will be able to apply from here and learn more about the application and exam process. And uh, if you talk, start to talk about the exam content, you will just think about what you have to know to provide a safe and successful regional anesthesia practice. First, you have to know anatomy. This is, this is very important. It doesn't only include uh, neuroaxial blocks or preferred blocks, but you have to have an insight about sauna anatomy to distinguish the structures while you are practicing regional anesthesia. And a little bit of basic statistics, it means, um, statistical information plus study design and perioperative and acute pain, which is very important because most of our peripheral nerve blocks or neuroaxial blocks are aiming 
post-operative acute pain management, and very um, logically, pharmacology and sedation. And you have to know the physics and equipment of the um, your practice and physiology, pathophysiology, and procedures, surgery, and re, um, techniques also in the exam content. Uh, another thing, some questions may ask for complications and side effects and specific um, patient groups like trauma patients, elderly, obstetrics, or pediatrics, and some obesity um, patient groups are also in the exam content. Uh, these are actually in very uh, well described and uh, defined in this website, uh, but I didn't want to put it in uh, here very, very long, in a very long way, but you will be able to understand what is asked under each topic if you just go to this address, and it is in the ESRA website. So where will you study? You, uh, we always suggest using main textbooks, which are new editions, um, because they're all, they always have uh, basic information, which will not change in many years, like local anesthetics, anatomy, or physiology. And you have to read current guidelines of societies or prominent uh, institutions, especially on developing topics like anticoagulants and postoperative pain management. So if we go to the exam structure, we have two kinds of uh, questions at the moment. First one is MCQ questions. These are like true false questions. And these have one stem and five options to be evaluated as true or false. These will be replaced by SBA questions soon. However, we are still using them in the exam uh, um, structure. And the other group of questions are single best answer questions. These are um, more popular and um, efficient for uh, examining proficiency. And they have got one stem and four options with one correct answer. I just want to show you some sample questions. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to show you real questions, but MCQ questions are like uh, one stem and you're, you will be evaluating the statements as true and false. And SP questions, we have got a question sentence. And you have to use your own knowledge to distinguish the correct answer from the uh, options. And these stems, uh, samples may include, or these stems for the questions may be direct questions looking for your exact knowledge, or they may be like a scenario, or they may just um, describe a situation and your judgment according to region anesthesia techniques, um, drugs, or all related procedures, complications, and uh, their treatment. And just to uh, tell about this part one, examination, written examination, the language of the exam is English, if it is not offered in Spanish or Turkish. And we are working on more languages to be included in this translated exam spectrum. And uh, this is a bring your own computer event. It means that you have to bring your own computer to the exam site and you will be um, having some instructions how to get the questions on your computer and answer them there. And you may check your computer at the application page directed by our track uh, platform. And another thing that exam duration varies uh, according to the proportional MCQ and SPA questions, and the results are usually announced in two to three weeks. 
and you may find more detailed explanations at this website, ESRA website, and under the uh, tag of diplomas, you will find ADRA diploma and part one section. So uh, before ending my breaking down ADRA part one uh, session, I would like to tell you a little bit about ADRA, its value and significance. This is what I feel that I have to tell you because I experienced it myself. I can tell you that it's a big contribution to your CV. It's a document for proficiency, and it really increases your eligibility for career development. And it's also a gate to take assignments in ESRA activities or regional anesthesia activities done by other national societies. And you can have um, instructor, lecturer positions at annual congresses or workshops. Also, you can get into ADRA activities as an examiner and board member, of, member after getting ADRA diploma. And it's a real step in your individual achievements. Actually, all of us uh, live according to our, uh, our needs. Our basic needs, physiological needs are under all other uh, needs like safety, love, longing. This is a very famous uh, diagram of Maslow's hierarchical needs. And what I believe is that ADRA diploma belongs to your self-respect, esteem, self-actualization, and realizing your potential. I can say that you will be very happy when you get this because it is a diploma. It is not required, but you get it for yourself. Thank you very much. I just want to give the talk to Peter. Um, yes, thank you very much for this um, encouraging and moving presentation for the exam. Thank you. Um, for, yeah, before I hand over the microphone to uh, Peter, can we just um, share the results of our first questions with our audience? Mm, yeah, we are. Yeah, we have um, over 200 people from different uh, places on their anesthesiology career. And uh, we've been receiving a lot of questions so far, and we will be, um, our speakers will be uh, answering them at the end. Now I'm handing over the microphone to Dr. Peter for his presentation about EDRA part two, please. Thank you very much, uh, Gurkham. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am uh, Peter Majavi, and I will talk about the EDRA Part two exam. So EDRA part two exam uh, is a little bit more complicated and there are a few more new changes. So uh, what I I'm going to talk about is the new exam structure. I'm going to uh, bring more light into the scoring system and then we're going to answer uh, some questions and some issues related to the workshops uh, for the candidates and some uh, questions for the organizers. Uh, if you um, want to know uh, more information about uh, EDRA exam, as Oya has already mentioned, if you click on the EDRA website, it will get you into this uh, homepage, and then you click on the diplomas, which you can see here on the right bottom corner, or you can type uh, the EDRA uh, Europe.org slash EDRA or EDRA part two. When you click on the EDRA part two, the first, uh, what you're going to see are the uh, links for the access for the full prerequisites. So you can have a list of the things you need to know before you apply, or if you're considering to apply, there's loads of uh, frequently asked questions and we are um, expanding the pool. It's now uh, probably around five pages of the uh, FAQ. So uh, loads of questions which you probably want to ask, you will find the answers there. If they are not, let us know. We'll answer them either during this webinar or we will put them up in the FAQs later on. You'll find some of the uh, interesting information about the code of conduct there. It's more for the examiners, but uh, they're freely available. What is important for you, for example, to find out is that we have a full list of 
uh, examiners. And if you do have any conflict of interest with any of the examiner, positive or negative, let us know prior to your exam and we will uh, be able to not to pair you with that uh, examiner during your practical uh, exam, whether this is a 2A or 2B uh, exam, obviously state the reason for your conflict of interest. And then we'll have something to uh, talk about the EDRA approved workshops, but I'll, I'll cover it later. Any applicant who successfully part, uh, passed the part one uh, before the, uh, applying for the part two need to send us the confirmation uh, by the head of department or program director that uh, he or she has done uh, at least 150 neuraxial blocks, 150 peripheral nerve blocks, some of them upper limb, some of them lower limb and uh, trunk blocks. So it cannot be 150 anchor blocks, for example. And then he needs to have a certain, certain uh, um, normal balance. Uh, and then we need to have some certificate of attendance of the workshops, but I will talk about uh, workshops later. Recently, I had a question from a colleague who works in, uh, as an independent practitioner in a private hospital. Uh, in that case, because he said that uh, he hasn't got any uh, head of department, uh, it would be good to um, contact your president uh, of the National Society and then uh, support your application with approval and attach maybe a logbook of your, uh, of your blocks. Uh, if you want to know more about the application criteria, this is the this is the link, and you'll find loads of uh, useful information. I cannot go through that because we don't have the time for this. The exam is divided now to two sections. There's a section A and the section B. Each of them uh, lasts about 25 uh, to 30 minutes. The uh, EDRA uh, section, EDRA two parts, section A. Uh, can be um, examined um, orally uh, in an online fashion, which we have introduced uh, last year. And also in face-to-face, -face, we will offer a couple of places in, during the, um, in Paris, during the World Congress. Uh, and also the vast majority will be section 2B. So the, during the section A exam, we will ask uh, the uh, um, standardized questions about the procedure. So for example, what are the uh, analgesia and anesthesia options for thoracotomy? And then we will discuss various kinds of uh, options. And then also we will discuss uh, some common um, uh, regional anesthesia related complications, for example, uh, local anesthetic systemic toxicity or failed block or um, spinal epidural hematoma, stuff like that. In section B, we will um, have the practical demonstration of anatomy. We have the live models. We would like our candidates to uh, demonstrate the uh, anatomy for uh, various kinds of blocks. For example, thoracic epidural, how you find the level uh, for other blocks, uh, the innervation zones. Uh, and um, uh, also the candidate will need to demonstrate the, the scanning technique for uh, uh, huge variety of the common performed um, ultrasound guided techniques. So we'll have uh, that uh, a new format divided to, into two. You can do it in a, in, a, in, a, in a way which suits you. So you can do 2B prior to 2A, or you can do 2A prior to 2B. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a problem, whatever, whatever suits you more. You will get the results both for the EDRA part one or EDRA part two within four weeks of the examination. If you do uh, fail uh, the EDRA part one, you can do it on limited times. There's no difference or there's no limit between uh, in time between the EDRA part one and EDRA part two. So if you leave one year or two years or 10 years, it's up to you. There's no, no limit for that. And then the uh, failure for the um, EDRA part two, uh, that can be repeated maximum three times. What are we expecting from our candidates is that when the um, uh, anesthesiologists are starting with regional anesthesia, they're moving from the novice to advanced beginner, and then uh, ideally they became competent, and then they're starting to be a little bit more deeply understanding of the, of the situation around the regional anesthesia until they become an expert. And this is somewhere on a high proficiency level where we would expect our candidates to perform. So being a really good regional anesthesia uh, practitioner, 
it's probably not uh, enough to pass the the Android diploma. We will uh, be expecting a little bit, little bit more. So uh, the Android diploma will also have the uh, the value in uh, in a community of of your colleagues. Edra uh, new scoring system. So we have uh, now a point system to uh, uh, assess every examination. So we have four questions, two in 2A and two questions for the 2B exam. If uh, you fail, then you get zero points. Borderline uh, exam is one point, clear pass is two. And we want to see those with the excellent uh, marks. They will get three points. Section A and section B are evaluated separately, and then maximum uh, uh, attempts for each section of the EDRA 2 uh, exam is three, as I said. So if you failed for the third time, you need to repeat everything from the very, very beginnings, EDRA 1 and EDRA 2 exam, as I said. So we have a couple of potential options. How are you going to score? So for example, if you answer your section A with two clear passes or clear pass and excellent exam or two excellent exams, then you're, this, is the, this is the best way you can be. And then if you go for the section B exam and you, if you score uh, exactly the same way, you're going to pass no questions, absolutely no problem. If you're going to have two borderline exams, or the answers for uh, for either section A or section B, or if you score uh, failed, so zero in any of the questions, that exam is uh, fail. So for example, you can have one excellent um, uh, answer, and then the second part will be fail, then your exam is failed. What if you have one borderline and one clear pass or, um, or excellent, then in that case, you can bring one of the borderline answer to your overall success if you pass the other uh, questions very clearly. So you, can, you are allowed to have one borderline answer from all four questions. If you do have two borderline answers, like you see one plus two in section A and one plus two in section B, then that will mean that your exam has failed. In that case, you can decide which section you're going to repeat, whether section A or section B, it's up to you, and improve your score in order to have enough points to pass successfully the exam. After every exam, we do a debrief, whether this is like this online or we do it face-to-face uh, -face where we discuss the, the borderline cases or uh, those who we, we're not sure whether uh, we should let them pass or not. And we get the, the overall um, feeling and, uh, and, and um, uh, opinion of the, of the other examiners. We have a huge pool of examiners uh, and there, there, we, there we decided uh, where we're going to go with that. If you want to know more about the new scoring system, we have published uh, a nice article in uh, December 21 in issue seven of the Ezra newsletter or Ezra updates. Uh, and then you can have more information there. Or if you go to the Ezra newsletter and then you click browse by the topic and then you find the Ezra and then you click, you will see all of the, um, uh, issues or, or papers uh, related to the EDRA exam. And we recently published a couple of them uh, in EDRA newsletter. So it's a good idea to go that way. Now we're coming to the workshops. And this is a topic which has been very interesting. And we received a lot of questions. There is a bit of a confusion. So we are trying to explain it in a very simple way. Hopefully, this will make a little bit more sense after this webinar. So until June last year, we had the old workshops requirements and we were running this since the uh, beginning of the EDRA in 2005. Now, after the July 2022, until the end of the June 27, we are in a transition period. And uh, from the July 27, we will go to the full uh, uh, point system uh, with, the, with, the, with the workshops to go ahead. Until now, we had uh, requirements of minimum of three workshops. At least one had to be Ezra workshop. Another one had to be cadaveric. 
and that was basically it. It was not a um, uh, very complicated way. However, some people still uh, couldn't uh, figure out what sort of combination of the workshops. A vast majority of the cadaveric workshops will still have some uh, ultrasound training. So if you bring uh, two cadaveric workshops, this is absolutely fine. But if you bring zero cadaveric workshops, that was the that was the problem. So from July 2022 until the end of the June 27, we are in the transition period where we have already introduced the new EDRA approved workshops, but also we accept the old workshops as long as they are not older than five years from the time of the exam. What I mean by that is we are going to have a next uh, EDRA part two exam in Paris 4th and 5th of September. So every workshop which is older than five years from this exam will not be accepted. 2023 minus five years is 2018. So if you do have uh, any workshop which you have attended prior to September 2018, this will not be uh, accepted for the for the EDRA exam. But if you have any workshop which is um, not older than that time or that uh, deadline, then those workshops will be will be accepted. Now we will have now two sets of workshops. Those workshops which were attended and organized prior to new transition start date, so bef before July 2022, and those workshops will be uh, accepted in the same way as they were in the past. Those workshops which are organized and attended after July needs to be EDRA approved only. And we have the list of the EDRA approved workshops. We are expanding it and we will invite the organizers to apply for the, uh, for the EDRA approved status, which is not that difficult, but the organizers need to uh, uh, get this activity and reach to us in order for the workshop to be, to be EDRA recognized. There's a couple of questions uh, of the people who attended, uh, let's say, small workshops, which I mean uh, like one uh, hour or two hour workshop to uh, various kinds of conferences, including ESRA, uh, annual conference or national conferences like RE UK. So those uh, workshops can be counted as long as they fit to the certain criterion. And that criterion is six hours. Why we se selected the six hours was we are offering the cadaver workshop during the Ezra conference, because not every candidates have the access to the cadaver workshop in their own countries. And this is one of the requirements for the Ezra exam. One workshop in Ezra conference is three hours, and we felt that one workshop will not be probably enough. Then we have extended it to the two workshop at least, and that means six hours in total. So if you are attending the Ezra conference and you book your uh, cadaver workshop, you need to have two of them, six hours in total, and this will be accepted as a cadaver workshop for your EDRA exam. If you're attending ultrasound workshops in ESRA conference or other conferences, then you obviously you need to collect six hours of those hands-on ultrasound workshops to be counted as one workshop. Hopefully that is a little bit more clear. Why we have introduced those new EDRA approved courses was that unfortunately we have seen the candidates who were very well prepared for the uh, theoretical part of the exam, but because of the very poor preparation from poorly executed workshops, they failed the exam and we were really sad to, to see them uh, needing to, to reapply for, for reset of the, of the exam. And when we retrospectively looked at some of those workshops, so some of the workshop claimed to be cadaveric, but the uh, hands-on cadaveric part was limited to one or two hours. And this was not really fair to the others who have spent maybe uh, uh, six or seven hours of working with the cadavers on a one or two day workshops like Innsbruck or others, where the uh, exposure to the cadaveric and, and applied anatomy for regional anesthesia has been much better. So the candidates have much had much better um, preparation for the for the workshops. Again, I would like to stress that these are only the minimum requirements 
for the candidates. That doesn't necessarily mean that everybody needs to have only three workshops. It's up to the candidates to decide for themselves whether they need three workshops or they need five workshops or they need 10 workshops. It's up to the individual to, to, to guide whether they need a little bit more time, a little bit more explanation, a little bit more understanding. So that when they come for the exam, they are prepared in the best possible way. Once we pass this transition period, which is five years, just because we are accepting five years backwards every uh, certification of the, of the uh, workshops, we will move to the full point system in uh, early July 2027. And after that time, all of the workshops which the candidates will present will have an EDRA point. And then after that, only the points will be uh, important and number of uh, attended workshops will not be important. So you can bring one hour workshop and guide them together as long as you fit to the 20 EDRA points of those at least six needs to be hands-on cadaveric. So we can fill this with, let's say two uh, um, EDRA cadaveric workshops during the conference for those people who cannot attend any any other cadaveric workshops but we would obviously um, advise people to attend those really uh, detailed and big workshops for cadaveric demonstration and then 10 of those points at least needs to be hands-on ultrasound points again these are the minimum requirements if you bring 25 edra points or 32 edra points it's going to be probably working for you as a candidate much better, but these are the minimum points uh, which will be required after 2027. The only thing which will stay that one of those workshops which you submit still needs to be Ezra, so this is, this is not changing. So hopefully this will bring a little bit more um, clarity. If you want to see the frequently asked questions, please visit this, uh, this link. And as I said, uh, the, uh, the list has already grown to the five pages and it's alive, so it will grow even further. Introduction of the EDRA approved criteria for the workshops will serve the organizers to apply for their own workshop, which they've been running for, uh, for a number of years. And uh, loads of them are of very, very good quality. So we are very interesting to get those uh, people apply for the EDRA approved status. And once you have the EDRA approved status, then your candidates will be able to attend uh, and use it for the, for the exam. So this is one of the uh, examples, how you calculate the, the, the points. And you it's, it's a good idea when you submit your workshop that you will even uh, in a color differentiate between the red, which is the hands-on cadaveric workshop uh, points and the blue ultrasound hands-on workshop uh, points and, and the other points. So you calculate uh, those points uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from this template. And then this is how you can apply for a certain amount of overall points. And then you need to break it down as an organizer of the workshop to hands-on cadaveric and hands-on ultrasound points. Workshop director has to submit us the national CPD or CME certificate so obviously your workshop will be um, uh, registered in a, in a national body cadaveric and ultrasound points needs to be highlighted in the application form at least 50 percent of the workshop faculty members must be ESRA members and then workshop director should be ideally edward diplomat or have some uh, huge uh, academic background or substantive teaching experience in the field of acute pain management and regional anesthesia Maximum ratio for participant and faculty for, per each station is one to eight for both for ultrasound and for the cadaveric workshops. Obviously, the less ratio is much better because if you have a one to four, then it's or one to six. This is this this will give your candidates much better preparation for the uh, for the exam. Edra board uh, reserves the right to send one board member or Edra examiner for those workshops which we do know do not know or we have never heard of uh, before that just to make sure that we are um, ensuring that the quality of the education and performance of the of the workshop will be of, of sufficient of sufficient level how we calculate those points for hands-on whether this is ultrasound or cadaveric one hour of teaching 
requires one point. And then if we have any anatomy lecture or a live demonstration for the, for the sonar anatomy, this will get you half point per every hour. So if you do four hours of anatomy lectures, this will give you two points. And if you have four hours of cadaveric hands-on training, that those will give you four points. Uh, apply slightly earlier than your, your date of the, uh, of the workshop, because we need to have a time and we are overwhelmed with the number of um, with the number of requirements at the moment. Uh, so we have the time to assess uh, the, uh, the points and we can come back to you. Once you are successful in the process and you were given the EDRA approved status, this is issued for three calendar years, including the year of the registration. So if you apply this year, you will get it for 2023, four and 25. And the uh, workshop will be automatically uploaded to the EDRA website and it will be listed uh, among the EDRA approved workshops after the after the uh, workshop we we require the uh, course organizer to uh, submit the feedback within 30 days and if the program or the faculty members will dramatically change then uh, the organizers needs to resubmit the new application hopefully you'll be successful in your uh, European diploma in regional anesthesia, like the Cristiano Ronaldo has been in 2016. And I wish you all the best and happy to answer any other questions which you have. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for this detailed um, presentation about part two. Yeah, uh, yes, we have been receiving so many questions and Dr. Chok already answered some of them in the answered part. You can see the answers. And before we um, start with the discussion part, and uh, could we please share the second questions for our audience? Uh, I want to thank you both for timing, uh, so we could save some time for the discussion. Yes, um, then unfortunately we don't have uh, enough time to answer all the questions, so uh, as I said before, you can see some answers uh, in the answered part, and we will be randomly choosing a few questions uh, to discuss lively. So, um, uh, are there any example questions and answer for part 2A or B to get better understanding of the level required for a clear pass? Thank you. From Leon Kong, I think it's for you, Peter. So the uh, uh, EDRA Part Two exam okay. is sorry, yeah, Am I yeah, okay? we can hear you. yes, perfect. Uh, so EDRA Part Two exam is a live discussion between the the two examiners, maybe three examiners, and the and the candidate. It can swing from one side to the other side, so it's it's very fluid. We do not have any very rigid strategy. We will uh, adopt to the to the style of the of the candidate, and then we will respond in in a certain way, which will make sure that the candidate will present themselves in the best possible way and answer the question in in the best possible way. We would like to uh, have really broad knowledge and not for really focus on the healthcare system or the hospital where the candidate is from but having a slightly more broader picture and broader knowledge in terms of the various kinds of procedures or local anesthetic or different drugs uh, or the catheter techniques or single shot techniques in terms of being around the individual and being on this really high level of the hierarchy, which I showed uh, what we would expect from the, from the candidate. So it's extremely difficult for me to put this is, this is acceptable and this is not acceptable because we will, we will, we will, we will judge that in terms of the uh, matureness of the of the candidate uh, how the how the question will be will be answered obviously uh, we will we will have it based on the published evidence and then the evidence based practice okay thank you for the answer and for dr chok uh, how long does it generally take to prepare for the EDRA part 1 exam um actually it depends on the time you can spend on this with your heart and brain. But if you just judge, you can, in how many days you can read and understand 1000 pages. 
I think it will be uh, a cool duration because especially physiology, local anesthetics and adjuvants and anatomy, you need a better and detailed information. Sometimes you can keep um, finding Find questions it. and correct answers if they are practical with your, practi with your practical ex experience. Uh, it means that it, it's like three months will make you get better results for part one. But for part two, maybe Peter will give you another explanation. Um, yeah, we have been also receiving so many questions uh, about um, the limited spots in the Paris Congress. So our participants uh, wants to know if it's possible to um, make some new spots for the Azure Part 2A. Um, yes. We have limited spaces for 2A exam, which I think at the moment is fully booked. And we are waiting for the um, candidates to book their spots for 2B exam, because this the 2B exam is the only place where we can uh, assess this exam uh, during the uh, annual Congress, now World Congress of Regional Anesthesia. We, uh, we are strongly considering uh, repeating the online 2A exam. Um, and uh, um, the, the date and our decision will be communicated soon. Oh, okay, thank you. And any possibility other workshops will be conducted in Asia in the near future? Uh, from an this is, yes, this is an interesting this is an interesting uh, feature because we know that there's a huge um, interest and huge potential for our candidates uh, coming from Asia. Uh, especially from from India, but from from other countries as well. And we are very popular. We are organizing the Edra One exam in India in next couple of days, and it's always been very well attended. And we have always very very good cooperation between the uh, between the India and the Edra. In terms of the uh, of the exams, sorry. Uh, uh, in terms of the workshops, uh, typically the exam, and this is the case uh, in in Paris uh, as well, is conducted prior to the conference. So unfortunately, those candidates who want to see the exam cannot use those um, um, workshops from the Paris conference. But we have been listening to the feedback of the, of the participants and from the next year, from the 2024, where the, when the annual Congress of Ezra will be in Prague in Czech Republic, we have decided to move the exam after the conference on Saturday and Sunday after the Ezra conference. So those candidates who want to come to the Congress fulfill the criteria for the for the workshops, whether ultrasound or cadaveric, will be able to do that. And then they can fill the, all of the requirements and they can they can see the exam. So this is one way how the how the candidates from far away can fill the requirements set up for the for the Ezra exam. In terms of the uh, expanding the Ezra uh, approved or Ezra official Ezra workshops uh, outside Europe, we have just introduced the uh, concept of the Edra approved workshops. So we want to give it a little bit more time to wrinkle and iron all of the wrinkles inside Europe. But very soon we are planning to expand our activities to, to the Asia and to the other centers where we can potentially offer Ezra official uh, workshops in terms of the cadaveric workshops or other workshops in other countries. But I don't want to give everything away at the moment because we do not have everything finalized. But there is a strong suggestion that that that, that is the direction we want to go. Okay, thank you. And and uh, someone uh, from our audience wants to know: as a course organizer, where and who can I submit proposal to to have an exit accreditation? Very good. At the moment, uh, if you collect all of those information, and if you want to know more, as I said, you, if you go to the Ezra newsletter, Ezra updates, the, 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 there's loads of information about that. You uh, submit all of the information to our uh, office, to the Edra, so edra at ezraeurope.org. Send us an email with all of the all of the information, and we will be able to 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 look at that. Obviously, calculate the the address points. We will check whether this is this is correct, and if we need to send 
uh, an Ezra, uh, Ezra board member or Ezra examiner, um, then we will we will communicate that back to the to the organizer. As we speak, we are uh, intensively working with our webmaster team on the slightly more simplified version of uploading the information into the Ezra website. And once this is going to be finalized, I believe that it's going to be finalized by the end of this year, the whole process will be much more easier. And then we will ask more of our colleagues to help us out with the maybe non-English <clears throat> non uh, speaking uh, organizers. So the, those uh, workshops which you have in your own language, whether this is Portuguese or Hungarian or Swedish or whatever else, can be still counted for the for the EDRA exam, but we need to get the council representatives to help us out to understand uh, the the essence of the of the workshop. So do not think that only English uh, speaking workshops can be can be uploaded for the EDRA exam. Mm -hmm. So for Dr. Chok, uh, what's the benefit of taking this exam for colleagues from low income countries? How is it different from EDPM? Thank you. Um, well, first, uh, first, I can I must tell that EDPM is a, a diploma for pain medicine, which is just chronic pain, actually. But region ETRA is a region anesthesia diploma. It gives a little bit like subspecialty for competence diploma, like how you can say that I'm a pediatric anesthesiologist. If there isn't a pediatric anesthesiology residency or fellowship in your country, how can you prove that you are good at it? If you don't have any kind of uh, subspecialty training or fellowship system in your country on regional anesthesia, how can you say that I'm proficient in it in any platform? EDRA gives you chance about this um, self. Uh, esteem or self-actualization and prove it to others. When you say, I have got EDRA diploma, it means that you pass the written exam on every topic in a textbook of regional anesthesia. Secondly, if you pass EDRA part two, it means that six people reviewed your competence in an oral examination because in each part, you will have two examiners and one observer, both observing you and observing the examiners and making all fair and um, correctly done on your behalf and on behalf of EDRA. So it means that some other people out of your place, um, very uh, objectively uh, trying to understand your competency and you get a diploma after all of these. So it is very easy to prove your competency to at any other platform. If you are working in India, but just applying a work at Qatar, you can show this. Because if it is not very, very valuable at every level, but it shows your competency. This is for uh, for a person coming from Turkey, uh, we are not the high economic standards or high income country at the end. But I must tell that I'm very proud of having this because this shows that I at least managed 150 peripheral nerve blocks and I did it. I'm different from the other my colleagues. But other than this, I cannot tell you any financial benefit or any other very accurate thing that when you get this, you will get this job. When you get this, you will become an associate professor. When you get this, I cannot tell it. But it helps in the way developing your career steps. I can just tell it. This Maybe this is my optimistic uh, feelings. But this is my experience. I can just tell it like this. Thank okay. you. I think it's a very good uh, point of view. Um, I think our time is up. Uh, before we take any last words from our um, speakers, I want to thank our training um, team for making this possible and 
for our speakers to adjust their schedule uh, according to this uh, meeting. I know uh, you are already in the United States and in the middle of the day and you're uh, yeah, adjusting your schedule. So uh, and if, yeah, any last words? And during the time we can share the results of the questions we just asked. Please, Dr. Cho. Oh. Oh, that's good that I saw that the questions are answered in the uh, positive way that ADRA exams will be in some people's agendas. And I, I would like to thank everyone who are interested in this uh, webinar. I hope we answered your questions and I hope to meet all of you in next uh, exams in Paris and at the World Congress and other ESRA meetings. Please come and ask questions personally there too. I will be very glad to answer any question. And if I can mentor any of of you, it will be my big pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gurkham, for this nice webinar. Thank you, Peter. Um, I would like to uh, ensure the uh, people who asked the questions and did not have the time for us to answer them, that we will uh, put those questions in a Q&A or sorry, the um, FAQ uh, Ezra website, and then we will try to answer them uh, both using um, the Ezra uh, social media. Um, as the um, overall um, success rate of our exam is steadily rising, in the last couple of years, uh, EDRA 2 exam he, uh, has now reached nearly 80% of the success rate. And EDRA 1 exam is uh, standing somewhere around 68 to 69%. I would like to encourage the people, do not be afraid. It is possible to become an EDRA diplomat and join the, the, the big and growing EDRA family. Another very interesting thing is that we are offering the 200 places to sit the EDRA 1 exam and EDRA 2 exam in Paris. So there are still few places for the EDRA 2B exam and the EDRA 1 exam. Use this opportunity before it's going to be completely booked. The third one, uh, we are growing the, 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 the pool of the EDRA examiner, uh, sorry, the EDRA uh, diplomats. And then from the EDRA diplomats, we will probably choose um, the future EDRA examiners. So your career will not stop at the taking the diploma but it can be pushed further then you become uh, our colleague in, in edra board or maybe uh, serve here in a future webinar in a couple of years as a as a chair for the edra one or edra two exam uh, we will now have we now have slightly over 850 um, uh, edra diplomats and then we are exciting because very likely hopefully we're going to cross the 1000 uh, edra diplomats this year in paris and maybe you are the next uh, one thousandth uh, EDRA diplomat. But even if you're not going to be the thousandth one, you're going to join the the growing family of the very highly trained individuals, which are very unique in this in this world. And you're going to share together with us and with others the the um, um, really high benchmark of uh, offering the regional anesthesia services and advice among the various kind of countries and hospitals. Thank you for invitation to this webinar to Ezra. Thank you, Gurkim, and thank you, Oya, for joining. Yeah, thank you for the last minute contributions and, and hope to see you all in Paris. Good evening. Good evening.